Welcome guys to the second video of the Mitre Attack series. Uh, in the first video I showcased guys the framework that I've designed and how we can leverage Mitre Attack techniques to build a comprehensive security operations center. We discussed the problem background, we discussed how we can move up the pyramid of pain, and then I wanted to dedicate this video to showcase after considerable research or threat intelligence we can map those threat actor groups into a heat map so we'll we'll showcase how we can use the mitre attack navigator tool how we can build heat maps and how we can uh, showcase and see which techniques those threat actors would use and how we can better uh, design our defenses so if we go to mitre attack website and we jump into attack navigator as you can see the tool is here so this is the mitre attack navigator tool we have a few options to be used here so we can create a layer we, we can open existing layers uh, we can also create layers from other layers and then we can customize so as we can see as we as i discussed in the first video predominantly in this case we're going to use enterprise matrix but we can also i'll showcase how we can leverage further in the videos mobile and industrial control systems and how we can also use the legacy uh, controls so what we'll do is we'll start with the enterprise matrix so like you, as you can see this is the whole mitre attack matrix so we have the 13 tactics here and these are all the techniques and procedures that threat actors use so what we'll do is i picked up uh, six threat actor groups that we're going to create a heat map from so I'll just showcase how we can use the tool, how we can build the heat map, and how does the tool work itself. So what we'll do is we'll start with uh, one of the threat actor groups. I'll pick six groups that are very famous and most of the threat actors, um, most of you will might, might be aware of those threat actor groups. So as we can see, if we, in the, in the control selection uh, pane, if we, if we click search or multi-select, this legend appears which we has all the threat actor groups all the software um, used by threat actors we have mitigations campaigns and data sources so at uh, this uh, creation we're going to focus just on threat actor groups so we're going to start with uh, a threat actor group called sandworm um, most of you might have heard it there's a books written about it uh, so sandworm is an advanced persistent threat uh, essentially operated by a military unit called 74455 which is a cyber warfare unit of the russia's gru unit uh, so we'll start with sandworm so if we can locate sandworm team here and we'll select them the key point in here is once we select them we need to attribute a scoring so what we'll do is we attribute a score of one and we'll also for the ease of use we can add additional information here so we can add metadata we can add links we'll just for this time we we'll just name the layer as called sandworm so that's one layer complete so essentially once we attribute a score all of the techniques that this threat actor group use they become red so we'll go into the next and we create another layer and now we'll create a layer for the threat actor group called also known as ta505 so ta505 is a sophisticated and, and innovative uh, threat actor group they have plenty of uh, cybercrime experience and they also um, been attributed to be coming from Russia so if we do again selection we'll find the TA505 there we go and again we need to attribute a score of one and we also name this layer as TA505 there we go that's our second layer done and then we'll move and add uh, a third layer so if we create another enterprise so this layer we will dedicate to a threat actor group known Roque so Roque is an alleged uh, Chinese speaking adversary uh, whose primary objective appeared to be crypto jacking or stealing victim resources for the purposes of mining cryptocurrency so essentially they've been their goal was to hijack your computing power and use that for crypto mining so we'll find 
a rock a group and we just passed it so there we go rock a group again we're attributing a score of one which highlights all of the techniques we'll also will name this as rock a and there we go we have three and then we'll add the next one so the next one what we'll do is we'll add so that this is a threat actor group uh, known as menu pass also known as apt 10 so it's a threat actor group that has been active since all the way since 2006 so um they are associated uh, with the chinese ministry of state security in tianjin uh, and they have attacked numerous healthcare defense aerospace finance and maritime and biotechnology energy companies so we'll add them here in our threat actor group section as well so we just need to locate menu pass there we go and then attribute a score of one and we'll also name the layer as menu pass there we go that's number four we'll also add another layer and the next one will be the infamous lazarus group so lazarus group is a cybercrime group made of, of currently is unknown individuals uh, run by the government of North Korea. So that's North Korean uh, group. Uh, also uh, known to be um, attacking various organizations around the globe and very well known in the cyber threat intelligence industry. So we locate the Lazarus group there we go and we're gonna attribute the score of one to them as well and we'll name this layer as Lazarus group there we go and then we'll do the last one number six is gonna be lapsus so lapsus is um, another international extortion focused hacker group uh, it's also been named by Microsoft as DEV 0537 unlike unlike most other hacker groups though Lapsus is known for using messaging apps such as telegram for communications uh, to the public including recruitment and posting sensitive information about uh, about their hacks so again it's another well-known group in the in the world so we'll add them here too the lapsus there we go scoring of one and the layer named as lapsus there we go so now we have six layers we have six layers of six threat actor groups so where do we go from here to create a heat map you might ask so the next step is and I showed you guys in the beginning what we'll do is we can create a layer from the six previous layers so that's where we use this section here and that's where the score most importantly comes in so we'll obviously select enterprise attack version 13 which we used for all the other three layers but as you can see there is an indentation against each of the of the modules here so we have a b c d e and f so the our score impression expression will be a plus b plus c plus d plus E and plus F and that's how we express our score so essentially what we're doing is we attributed a score of one for each technique that each threat actor group has and what we do is once we create this layer we want to combine all of the techniques and, and establish a score so most of the techniques that has most matches will obviously have the highest score so let's see but let's have a look how does that look like in practice so once we create this there's our heat map and you can see there's a variety of colors what I like to do first of all I don't like the least amount of matches being red I would like always to change that color so we can change the color into green so these are the least amount of matches and what I do is I change the most matches into red color so essentially what I do is I'll just flip the colors around and there we go so now we can see a heat map so obviously green has the 
as you can see it has attributed score so it has the, the matches which is the score of one so that means all of these bright green colors means that only one threat actor group out of the six uses that technique whereas as you can see the red has a match of score of five so there's a couple of these that have five so that means out of the six threat actor groups five of them use that technique so you have the obfuscate decode files or information and you have ingress tool transfer the reason why i'm doing this is we can create a heat map so there's a few outputs that we can currently do so we can render that to an svg and we can can create essentially an a3 format page we can you know put in our sock in our office that we can use we can also uh, download this as json so nowadays json input can be used in various tools where we can create these heat maps and use them we can also download it into an excel uh, format in a csv format so what would normally I would do in the next step would be we can download this in, in um, Excel format and we can list by priority. So obviously the, the ones that have five matches, these are uh, the critical techniques that we need to inbuild either mitigations or detections in our SOC. So we can prioritize them from top to bottom and address whether we need ingest specific data components for detection of those techniques. Uh, whether we're building mitigations in our security program and that's how we evolved in our continuous evaluation cycle so that's how it works uh, so that's essentially a heat map of six threat actor groups that we combined from six layers built a layer from layers and as you can see this is a quite cool heat map there's a few tools we can use here we can also we can expand into sub techniques to create even a bigger map we can also reduce this we can also highlight the unselected techniques and we can also remove them so what we can do is we can uh, select an annotated ones and what we'll do is toggle and remove them so they became gray now so what we can do once we toggle the state we can remove them so most of the techniques that are unselected have disappeared from the heat map so now we have a condensed heat map so we can play around and you know if we want to have a full picture or not full picture we can use it in various operations but that's essentially a heat map of six threat actor groups that we captured now if let's move on to the next so i'll showcase how else we can use this so we built this uh, heat map based on threat six threat actor groups what we also can do is so if we select an enterprise matrix as we can see in their selection as i mentioned there is various softwares that we can use as well so we've we've as you know most post breaches unless it's very serious big breach and and some of the government organizations have to be, been breached the attribution is really hard so instead of going attribution for threat actor groups we can discover various um, ransomware strains malware strains that have been used in various threat attacks against specific organizations like ourselves and then we can create a heat map based on the software so we'll do one like that now as well so what we'll do is we'll select some of the well-known software uh, strands, such as, for example, let's start with something as Babook. Babook is a ransomware strain that's been used in various hacks around the globe. So again, we'll do attribute the score. We'll name this as Babook. And then we'll create some layers from some of the most famous ones. So uh, we'll create another layer from, and in this one, we'll also add something called, and there's another famous HTTP time type of DDoS attack that's also known as black energy so black energy is essentially has been attributed and been alive since about 2007 8 
and it's attributed to a sandworm group that we matched on the previous heat map and essentially the black energy does various ddos attacks and there's been iterations of tools and as you as you might have read if you read the sandworm book as well there's mentioning of uh, black energy where it's been used against uh, ukrainian various institutions especially against electricity grid to downgrade their services so we'll add that here in a mix and we'll add a name black energy there we go and then we'll do a few more so we'll also add another one very famous tool also known as Bloodhound. So Bloodhound is a is an open source tool that provides visibility into active director environments. This is a crucial point. So most organizations will have some form of identity management and most likely it's going to be active directory. So you can deploy Bloodhound in the organization and it pro can provide maps into various domains within active directory can provide information about your password policies you can extract so much information so loads of threat actors will try and deploy this tool if they can so we'll add this in here too so we will locate a bloodhound there we go and we'll add a squirrel one here as well and then we quickly name the layer as well Bloodhound, there we go. And then we move on to another one. So and next is gonna be we're gonna add a really well known ransomware strain. So we're gonna go for Clop ransomware. And most of you probably heard about it. It's been knocking around the globe for quite some time and has been wreaking havoc all over the place so we just named this as cop there we go there's layer four we'll just add a few more in here so what else we're gonna add we're gonna add also a really famous family of malware that is called Cobalt Strike so Cobalt Strike is a is a paid penetration testing product that allows an attacker to deploy a beacon so essentially you can deploy a beacon in your victim's um, uh, environment and what it allows to do it allows things like command ex uh, code execution key logging file transferring and privilege escalation and port scanning that allows so much so it's a crucial tool that some of the threat actors will try and use so we'll add that here as well we'll name the layer as well this is cobalt Strike. There we go. And then we'll add the last. We'll do one more. Let's add one more. And it's another ransomware group known as Conti. So Conti's infamous ransomware group as well. So there we go. We'll add them here core of one and we'll call the layer as Conti. there we go so this is a sixth ransomware slash malware slash you know penetration tools that threat actors might be using so we'll do the same thing here so we'll do create a layer from layers same formula applies because we have the same six six numbers and we'll just create a heat map as I've done in the previous example, I would just like to swap the colors. So what I'll do is I'll put green here. We'll swap this to being red. And we can see now it's a completely different example from the threat actor groups. So now the most matches. 
so we can see out of the six there's again we have a few that have five matches and now there's few other few completely different techniques so you have native api you have file uh, and directory discovery as well as process discovery and you can see all of these techniques has a, a t number attributed to them so they'll be key in our next videos when we start mapping them to data sources data components how we gonna potentially create ingestion in our security incident event management platform so there is a few ways how we can do it and we can discuss this because you can you can either apply mitigations to improve your defenses against those techniques but you can also create analytic rules to make to make sure that you can detect them should threat actors try and, and use those techniques in your environment so that's the sort of the attacker perspective heat maps what we like also to address in this video and we can do a, a couple examples or, or one at least heat map example how we can look at it from defensive side so what we're going to do is we'll create another heat map and last one to showcase how we can do from the other side so we're going to create another enterprise matrix and and this time what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the defensive side so in defensive side heat maps we can do mitigations and data sources so what that really does it allows to to view from our perspective where is our coverage against mitre attack so we can we can list the specific mitigations that we already have in place or we can have a look at our data sources that we have in our SOC and our seam and see what coverage do we have against MITRE attack. So we again, we can overlay and compare that against threat group heat maps, against software heat maps, as well as, you know, our defense mechanism. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll build a heat map of the mitigations that normally organizations should have in place. So we'll start with, if you have an Active Directory, I'm sure you have a safe configuration in place. So we'll have how the configuration attributes what's techniques. So we're going to build that and we're going to add here and then we're going to call this AD configuration. That's one layer. We're going to add another layer, which we're going to add for mitigations, antivirus and anti-malware most of us should have deployed some form of antivirus or anti-malware in our organizations so we can add that here and we're going to call this layer av there we go so that's two and what else we can add we can also add things like uh, let's do things like encryption so encrypt sensitive information and what techniques does that address so score of one and we can see also when we select this also showcases always how many techniques so there's 29 techniques that covered by this so we'll call this layer encryption there we go so we have three let's do say six at least so let's do the infamous mitigation that most organizations who does not have one get exploited or for some organizations that even didn't work because there is social engineering bypasses but we'll add multi-factor authentication here as well so as you can see it it, it works with 41 techniques and we'll put here as mfa as cybersecurity people, we love acronyms. So that's four. And let's just add two more. So what else can we add from mitigations? So I assume if we built our architecture correctly, we should have network segmentation. So let's add network segmentation in our mitigation path. And we'll call this and then the last what we're going to do is add one more which will be let's 
add here vulnerability scanning. There we go. Square one. And uh, let's go score look at vulnerabilities. There we go. So that's our six layers. So again, we do the same practice, choose layer from layers, same number six. So we don't need to, if, if we added more layers, we just need to expand the formula and add, make sure that all the letters are in a plus. So there we go, creation. But this time, instead of flipping colors, it depends on your preference, but I don't, I, I'm normally, when we do a defensive side, I don't change colors because what I like to see, so out of the six, the green ones are essentially the ones that have the most matches. So that means that these techniques in our environment is highly likely to be exploited because we have multiple mitigations across our tooling, across our mitigation implementations that they are highly unlikely to be exploited. So this is a cool way to see where your gaps are. So obviously red ones, which, which has at least one match so all of these techniques that has a color or that against them, that means they are in some way mitigated in our environment. So everything that's in white, we don't have any mitigations for them. So we can, again, we can, this is our mitigations. We can also overlay with data sources and analytics and see, you know, where else gaps are. We can also pip this heat map against the threat actor heat map, and then we'll see a combination of where the gaps are so what what mitigation we have in place and where we haven't and then depending on the most matches from threat actor perspective that's where we need to invest the most time so this is a prioritized view of how we can do that so hopefully you found this video enjoyable guys hopefully you learned a bit how to use a uh, navigator tool if you have any queries questions you know leave a comment under the video or you can always reach out to me on linkedin uh, my linkedin account is linked with my uh, youtube channel so um, any feedback welcome and um, hopefully see you on the next video thank you guys